And on another hand, sunnah is also used to refer to specifically the acts which the Prophet Muhammad did, which are recommended for you to do. This is the term used to refer to such acts. Another term used is also mustahab or mandub. These are two other terms used. And perhaps these are better because they avoid this uh, confusion that can come with a term being used in two different contexts. So from the point of view, when one says that it is sunnah to wear the beard, beard it is not sunnah from the legal point of view which distinguishes it from that which is obligatory or that which is disliked or prohibited. That's not the correct usage of the term sunnah with regards to the beard. The term sunnah with regards to the beard falls under the category of the general practices of the Prophet Muhammad And of his general practices, there are some things which are obligatory. For example, it was his sunnah to pray two units of prayer for Fajr. Two units of prayer for the obligatory prayers of Fajr. This was his sunnah. I mean, you're not, it's not mentioned in the Quran that for the morning prayer it consists of two units. Two rak'at. It's not mentioned there. The Prophet Muhammad did it. And he said, pray as you saw me pray. So he did it and he instructed us to follow his way. So for the morning prayers, the obligatory morning prayers, it should be two units of prayer. So we can say it is from the sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad to pray two units of prayer for the morning prayer, Salatul Fajr. But that sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad is wajib, is obligatory. We could also say it is from the sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad not to eat uh, birds of prey and carnivorous animals wild carnivorous animals this is forbidden you will not find it in the Quran it's not there not mentioned the Prophet may God's peace and blessed be upon him he said that you should not eat any bird which kills with the claw or any animal which kills with the eye tooth these are wild animals carnivorous animals like the tiger the lion you know, these type of, and the birds are like the eagle, the osprey, the hawk, the falcon, etc., etc. We're not allowed to eat them. So we can say it is from the sunnah of the Prophet, may God's peace and blessings be upon him, not to eat birds of prey and carnivorous animals. But that sunnah, what the Prophet ﷺ, uh, prohibited, that is haram. It is haram to eat these things. So we have sunnah, which may indicate what is haram. Sunnah, which may indicate what is obligatory. We also have sunnah, which may indicate what is disliked. Like the Prophet ﷺ, uh, said that we should not eat and drink standing. The Prophet, may God's peace and blessings be upon him, said, do not eat or drink standing. But he himself was seen eat, eating and drinking standing, or particularly drinking standing. There's authentic narrations that he did so. So that practice of the Prophet, Muhammad which is from his sunnah, combined with his statement not to eat or drink standing, indicates to us that it is disliked to eat or drink standing. So here from his sunnah we have something which is disliked or what is known as makru. And then we have from his sunnah also, he said that whoever does uh, additional units of prayer with their daily prayers, two before Fajr, 
two before the whore, two after the whore, uh, two after Asia, or four after the whore, or four before the whore. Whoever does these on a regular basis, Allah will make a home for him in paradise. This is something recommended. Here is from the Sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad something which is recommended, highly recommended. We also have from the Sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad that when a uh, desert lizard, by, which is called in Arabic a dub, was brought to him to eat, because Arabs of Arabia did eat this desert lizard, he didn't eat it. When he was asked by one of his companions, is it haram, he said, no, I, it was just not in the area where I grew up, and I don't like it. So it was his personal dislike. He here indicates by that personal dislike, which is from his sunnah, that the eating of the dub, the desert lizard, is neutral, or what they call mubah. You may do it, or you may not. So... From the Sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad, we have all five categories derived. Now the question is, how do we know whether growing the beard is from the obligatory Sunnah or is it from the recommended Sunnah? How do we know that? Or is it merely from the, the permissible Sunnah, the Mubah? You do it or don't do it, doesn't matter. How do we know? Well, we have to uh, look at the principles which the scholars used to determine how things are classified as obligatory, how are they classified as recommended, how are they classified as permissible in general. Because we should be conscious that this classification is not done by a eeny, what they call an eeny, meeny, miny, mo method. Meaning that we get, for example, a bottle, and we put some balls inside, or whatever, one written on it, compulsory, another written, recommended, another written, permitted, another written, disliked, another written, forbidden. And we put it in a bowl, and whenever we have a problem to deal with, you know, is wearing such and such, or doing this, or saying this, or whatever, uh, how do we classify these things? That the scholar sticks his hand in the bowl, and whatever ball he comes out with, he says, okay, it says forbidden, so we say that one is forbidden. Puts his hand in, pulls out another bowl, uh, ball, it says, okay, permitted, no problem. He says, okay, that one's permitted. No, this is not the method. This is not the way in which they determine it. It's not arbitrary. It's based on principles. Once we understand these principles, then we can now apply this to all of the various areas. And this is part of the science known as usul al-fiqh, or the fundamental principles or methodological principles of law. How do we determine when something is obligatory? We know it is obligatory when a direct command has come from the Prophet Muhammad to do this thing. He said, do it. Now, some people say, well, a command to do something doesn't always mean you must do it. Because one may command somebody to do it and we are in fact recommending. And we may command somebody to do something, and in fact, we're pleading. What does this mean? For example, if we tell Allah, tell God, give me success, O God. Is it obligatory on God to give us success? No, we are pleading for success. If we say to somebody at work with us, who is workmate or something like this, we say to them, do a good job with this. We're recommending them. Are we commanding them? No, we're on the same level as they are. We're, you know, equal workmates. We're not the boss or anything like this. So we tell them, uh, 
do a good job, okay? We're recommending, we're asking them to do a good job, recommending that they do a good job. Or if the boss tells the secretary, write this letter, it means she has to write this letter or he has to write this letter. So they go ahead and they do it.